Hello. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the Python Coding Dojo. I'm Till Maas. And I will start with a uh, short introduction about uh, the Coding Dojo in general. Um, the Dojo itself is usually the training space for martial arts, for example, uh, in Japan. And that's uh, the, the translation is the place of the way. And we are not uh, practicing martial arts here, but instead we will be practicing coding. So in the coding dojo, we work together on solving a problem. The problems are called katas or training sessions. And um, yeah, we are see five people. Uh, we will divide into um, different roles at this point, and um, the most active role in the beginning will be the driver, and that's um, the one person who will be coding in front. Oh, there will be no more participants. So I just started about the coding dojo, um, and we will be, everyone will be having a different world, and one of the first worlds will be the driver. That's the one person sitting here in front uh, and doing coding work on the actual test um, or the practice session that you want to do. He will be supplied with printing. That's uh, a suite from my hometown, just to make sure, that, because it's always um, making people nervous when everyone is watching them code, so that should uh, make it a little bit easier to do it. And the driver is in charge of the coding, so he can or he or she can do whatever they want. And of course, uh, we are all here to support the driver. So if something is unclear, if it's unclear what to type or how to type something or how to achieve something in Python, just ask for help. And um, the driver also gets a person next to them. That's the navigator. And both uh, the driver and navigator can also work in silence if they prefer. And yeah, the navigator, that's the second role that we'll be having. That, so we have two people pair programming in front. And the navigator is responsible to provide the printing to the driver and also support the driver however it's necessary. And of course, um, the, driver, uh, the navigator will be the next driver after a few minutes. So they should be... Um, pay close attention about what's the way that we are going to so that they uh, can continue in programming. And the third part is the audience, so everyone else. And they uh, should pay attention to what's happening uh, on the, um, with the driver. And uh, whenever they are asked for help, they should respond kindly and also, if they see an opportunity to learn something or to improve something, they should uh, wait for the right moment and then they can give a comment, ask a question whenever something is unclear. And we want to make sure that we follow this guiding principle by a Zen teacher. That is, oh, there's a little bit of lag. So, it's important to note that uh, what Shun Ryu Suzuki said, everything you do is right, nothing you do is wrong, yet you must still make ceaseless effort. So, it's important to do, so the driver can actually do what they want, but of course it's important that they at least try to uh, move to the goal that we have. And there's some one thing that's always wrong, that's... Um, code ridicule. So we all want, we don't want to blame anyone for doing anything here. Whatever they do, regardless of their Python skills or whatever skills, it's important that we can all learn and improve here in a safe way. And the agenda for the coding dojo will be that I give now the introduction and we will decide on a, a training session, the Carter. And then um, we, have, we will start with one uh, driver, navigator, 
and every five to seven minutes we switch places so the driver becomes um, g can go back to the audience the navigator becomes the new driver and someone from the audience becomes um, the new navigator and we do it um, as long as we have time or as long as we want to do it and probably we will since we are not so many people uh, everyone will be in the driver's seat uh, several times I guess and now about the katas the training session so we have so I um, it depends on how much skills we have so for example who of you is already programming Python day to day Brandy, at least, and maybe you too, okay? And maybe every once in a while? Okay, one, two, three, and who's never heard of Python or never programmed <laughs> Python? You, or what are your Python skills? Okay. So, yeah, I guess then it's good to just start with a simple task. So the first two tasks uh, are just um, yeah, simple tasks to get uh, to know Python. So the one thing is, oh, that's not working as expected. So the one Carter uh, can everyone read this? Or is it too small? Is this better? Okay. So one uh, training kata would be um, yeah to have this problem that we have a program that gets a letter, and depending uh, on the letter, we will draw this diamond. Here and for example, for the letter C, we first uh, draw an A, then two Bs, then two Cs, and for example, for Z, it would be the hugest diamond, and for everything else, it would be something in the middle. And the other uh, simple task um, would be a fizz bus, a fizz bus, and so the it's easiest to see in the actual output. We will output the numbers uh, from one to 100, and whenever the number is divisible by three, uh, we output this, and if it's divisible by five, it will be bus, and if it's divisible by both, it will be fizz bus, for example, for 15. So it's just nice uh, way to have a, few, uh, a loop and then do some checks and yeah afterwards we can uh, also try for example a kata um, targeted to python uh, to fedora development so uh, yeah i had this idea of just for example using uh, the metadata API that we have in Fedora, which is just a very simple web service, and then we could get, um, you, you can use it to query uh, for package dependencies and maybe output um, a dependency tree, or also if you have an idea for Fedora Carta, we could also look into this. So is there any preference on whether we start with the diamond or Fizzbus Carta? So who is for the diamond Carta? I count two, and Fizzbus. Nobody. <laughs> you will all have to uh, sit in front and become a driver. So <laughs> now you can decide on what you want to do. Okay, then we'll just start with the diamond Carter. And now it's time for you to get on this stage. So I need uh, two people to come up front, one will be the driver and one the navigator.
And the second one, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the layout is German, so I hope. Oh. <laughs> so in case you need um, the layout, you can uh, just hear us say about uh, what you speak in English. Yeah, in case you don't know. Let's let's find out. Okay. <laughs> and we have here um, yeah pipes to hear this with shell, which contains the pipe which are running. Yeah, we also need a navigator, so is there someone ready for this, please? You can also get a print, no? Just come in. So when you have a question for the audience, you probably have oh. to use the microphone. Um, and also, it's nice if you try to explain what you're trying uh, to do. Okay. Um, I see the, the problem statement here says the, the take and input is going to be on the other. So I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can hold it for you. Sure. So I'm going to assume rather than reading it directly, I want to take that from the command line. And what I remember is going for sys to get the command line arguments. And let's see, I believe the character then would be, so if I say the character I'm interested in is equal to, I think it was, Yeah, this keyboard's gonna. <laughs> uh, argv. And 
I'm going to assume this is the first argument. Oh, yeah. No? Okay. okay. No. It's shift, or is that? It's, so it's not. It no. You have to do it like it's in the, so you can either have it in US now, then okay. you can't look at the uh, <laughs> tabs. Oh, okay, I'll keep it. typing until I get lucky then. It uh, is it looking on? It's oh, uh, yeah, okay. Press the mouse. Oh, this is lucky. Right. Okay. Maybe oh. I should have printed it. Oh, this one. So here, yeah, that's, ah. that should probably be. Uh, okay. Here. Is this one? No. Okay. So, up here. Why does it? Okay, that's strange. Oh, am I in the wrong row? Oh no, the strange no. thing—it it seems to be German keyboard, even though. Well, oh, if that's the case, what, what would I get to get yeah, from that's over here? Okay. Okay. A lot of characters trying to get to that. Uh, this one? Zero. Now, in the real world, we'd want to test the length one, of the vector. I'm sorry. One, um, oh, you're right. Zero was going to be the um, the program name. Uh, nope. <laughs> Okay. And okay. And just to make sure I know what we're doing, I'm going to just print that out. And Argument. C. Or maybe you didn't say. Uh, maybe I did not. Yeah. Um, yep, win three. Right. <laughs> Oops. So is everyone still following what's happening here? Do you have any questions so far? Oh, it's the other tab. Okay. Okay, big. <laughs> yeah, so now we have the first step that we can get a character from the command line. We can also print it. So it's also always good to have uh, small steps and see if it works so we know where we are heading. Okay. And I believe the next thing I'm going to need is I need to turn that character into a number because I need to know what index I want. And that's going to be, so I'm just going to make an, oops, did I get into caps lock? No. I would be. Cast it as an int. Uh, I'm trying to remember to get from an ASCII character to an integer. I, I don't know if that's just an int cast or if there's an. 
index of type thing we have to call on a character. Is anyone idea what it could be? Okay, so I think it's um, ORD for to get the value. I think you have to use the first, uh, you have to get the first character, probably. The a so what I got was the ASCII code for C, and if I really wanted that to be, you know, the, the way we're doing the diamond, I probably want that to be three instead of 99. So if I subtract the lowercase a. And so actually, maybe you can switch now. So you uh, said what you would do next, and then the navigator can take over, and we would need a new navigator from the audience. So is anyone interested? Please? <laughs> you, you? There will, not, there will not be no harm done. We are all friendly here. Everybody's friendly except this keyboard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit sad. You can also turn off the recording if it helps. So yet yeah, you would come up. So if you're not participating, it's not really the coding dojo at this point. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> yeah. So would you like to explain what you're doing? Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, I'm now trying to well normalize the uh, ordinal by the first character. I guess the only question is whether we should treat capital letters char characters separately from lowercase or not, or whether we should uh, fold them into just everything be uppercase or what. At least in the web page, we're using up uppercase. In Firefox. Oh, Firefox. There's an upper function you could call on that? Right. Maybe that's better. Is that better? Upper. I don't know what the function is called. Well, since you've already put the lowercase c, maybe we should just make it lower. Oh, yeah. Well, I would, or we could do it later. I guess we could do it later. Uh, you can, you just, if, you if, can I, if on line seven you, you call uh, lower on that. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the, the code on, on line seven. Maybe we could call lower there. Okay. And that way we get on nine, it's still good. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, the phone. No. Maybe in view. Yeah, there's 
Zeitraum in Kairos. You mean just two thirty or something? Thirty or some, so, something really big. You want to say there enough? Is this okay? Go number two. Okay, number two. So. So we're coming from zero, okay, zero, one, two is C, okay, I see. Um, oh, the lower case, you see, okay. I'm just gonna try and start in Python over here. Oh, maybe I can do it here, can I? No, this is zero, okay. Can I just put this in the background? Is there a control key for this or something? Well, that's, that's control. So it's in the other tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. I just want to have an inter interpreter. Ah, I see. Uh, it is going to be this. Okay, Python three, I think. Wait, lower. But is there a lower case? I don't know what, how to call this. Do we need to import some module for? I so you do you want to ask a question, maybe? Don't we just stop this? Does anyone know the function to? Change any of the functions to change case for characters. Uh, yeah, I think it's a um, method of a string. So if you have a string, you can do um, dot and upper, for example. Can you read the terminal, or should we also increase the size? Ah, could we? Okay. Yeah, maybe it control plus, maybe? Plus. Is this okay? I think just dot upper there, and yeah, the, the parentheses for the function, and I think that should work. And maybe fire that guy off. Okay, uh, seems to work. Um, so that was some. So can everyone still follow what's happening here? No questions so far? Okay, so then maybe just change the words again. Does anyone else want to take this? Okay. <laughs> okay. So is anyone up for the new navigator position, please? No problem, because you can always ask for advice when you want, and it's also just helping. For example, if you uh, think of like the structure, and then we help you to get the actual uh, code out there. So what we're trying to get at is something that starts off indented goes out like a diamond, and then uh, comes back. So, uh, 
we type in, in the example we, we type in a C and we're expecting to get this diamond shape. So um, on, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pointing in. On line nine, we, we, well, we got the character, converted it to an uppercase letter. We subtracted the uppercase A from it. So an A is going to give us a zero, a B is going to give us a one, C would give us a two. And what we're going to want to do now is a loop. And for, I guess, um, I want to call it row. And let's see, I'm, I'm more Java than, I, I think I need to say a range here. I think if I say range i, oops, actually, I did that wrong, didn't I? That's for row in range, and then a colon at the end. Uh, colon, let's see. And now the white space magic says this is inside the for loop. And I'm just going to do a print. Row for right now. And that should at least give me something that counts. Uh, let's see. If it's C, I'm going to get 0, 1, 2. Two zero one. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. That that was this. this I you know, um, I is two, so I counted zero one, and it's not inclusive. If I really wanted this to go zero one two, I'd have to add one to it. Is everyone still following? What's going on here? You too? I'm lost. <laughs> okay. But, okay. Uh, but that's how you learn, right? Yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is figure out how many spaces I have to put at the beginning of the line. <laughs> and let's see. If it's first, I'm going to put some extra prints and then make the prints go away. So if I say uh, space is equal to I minus row, where's the minus? Here we go. Uh, Control? <laughs> uh, one. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, now what I expect is this to count zero, one, two, three for the row and I expect space to go, the SP to go the other way around. So it'll be counting down. I'll be doing fewer spaces each time. So I put two spaces on the first row, one on the second, and zero spaces on the third. And now I'm gonna hide this because that was just so I knew what I was doing. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm 
just going to make that print go away now. And I think you accidentally had hit. That's yeah, I must have instead of the shift. Okay. I think you can actually do a multiply on a string to get spaces. So if I say the space times the number of spaces I want, and then I'm just going to, for right now, I'm going to put an X just to sneak up on the problem. And if I save that, Okay, so I got the first part of the diamond filling in. Okay, so I guess it would be a good time to switch again. Can I enter cookie? Yes, of course. You can <laughs> always get one. <laughs> so does someone of you know dare to be the navigator? Jens, maybe, again? Yeah, we, we will figure it out. So, it's not a problem that you don't know Python. Do you? I don't, it, know, I don't know how to code. I don't okay. know any languages. I know a little bit of Dutch. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, but do you understand what's happening with the program so far, or is it completely uh, American? It's, it's all a mystery to me. <laughs> okay, so I guess we will maybe just start going through it and then. I get what's happening here, and then I, I, but here, obviously, this is what is changing. So this is the script, I guess, and then yeah. this is the output or what. Okay. So, um. okay. So, um, but you understand the problem, what we want to solve? You want to make a diamond, right? Yeah, and so we. Uh, on the right hand side, we already see part of the diamond yeah, um so I guess what i what I would tr try to do is flip that so well, yeah, so that the top x would be the single point, but then the, the other ones would go to the right, so kind of what he did, but slightly opposite, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> And so I think also the first thing is that we have X's here instead of the actual characters. So, yeah. so maybe do you want to change that first or do you want to first add the um, other side of the diamond? Uh, I, I would think it's probably best to figure out the X's first because you could add the letters in the end. Okay. Yeah, well. Whatever you want to do, it's right. Okay. So, um, I guess I would want to start a new line, right? It's a, yeah, so, um, this is the code that's creating the X's. Um, do you have some kind of understanding what's happening there? Vaguely, uh, I, I know that he's 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 somehow identified. Um, you yeah, maybe in rows, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you maybe um, form questions and then we try to answer them? Sure. So um, let's see. Um, so with the space I, so I. I guess that refers to line nine, right? So line 13 is referring to line nine, yes? Y yes, kind of. So um, you probably we need to uh, explain the um, ASCII code to you. Is someone interested in doing this?
not sure if anyone will sure. be watching that. Uh, yeah. Um, line nine was saying whatever whatever the character is for whatever the code is for the the character we just picked on the command line. Uh, if, if it was an A and I subtract A, I get a zero. If it was a B and I subtract A, I get a one. And that, that just turns it into a, a, a counter for what how, how far into the alphabet I am. And then, um, so that, that tells me how many rows we need you know, on, on the first part of the diamond. Sure. For line one, you just ignore, okay? Then at line five, it's actually to import some kind of system libraries. And what's the system library for? Because you look at the right side of your screen, you can actually use a command terminal. So you take in some user terminal, um, user's uh, input. So you need to import this system, system library so that you can call the function from inside. So that's for line five. Then for line seven, C is just an argument. What's an argument? It's just like a temporary container where equals to sys.argv is to get in the argument from your terminal from the right side, the black screen. So if you are a user, you input C, for example, so C may have a uh, ASCII number, maybe, for example, make it simple, 0, 1, 2. So C is a third letter, right? So it's number three, uh, number two. So if you have um, print C, it can come out, uh, okay, then dot upper. Upper is to change whatever the user input from lowercase to uppercase. If it's uppercase itself, it will ignore. It will just take in as it is. And then for print C, it will print out whatever the user has input. For example, this container is C. If the user inputted C into this container, it will just print out C from this container. If the user inputs A, it will print A instead of C because the user inputs A at the terminal. That's for line eight, the print C. And then for line nine, it's actually uh, just to take out the ASCII number uh, by using the function ORD. Uh, I don't know what this stands for. Then C uh, zero is an argument. Um, then minus ORD A, because A is always the first letter out of A to Z, for example. So A is actually zero. And let's say C is two. You take two minus zero, you get two spaces. So that's why they need to find the ASCII number um, from the program user input. So if user input C, you get two spaces. So that um, the next, for row in range I plus one, you can have spade the line 13. SP is actually an argument. So you get I minus row uh, to get the row number. And then for space, you use the row number to deduct the ASCII number. You get the difference of two. Can you understand that? No, but, <laughs> but very, very well explained. <laughs> you, you are listening from, from a student, so <laughs> if... if <laughs> I, I, I know nothing about this. Think of like... Okay. I think we know who takes the chair next, though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember first one anymore. Well, but I, I, I kind of get what you're saying. First time you only want to print one letter. Second time, you want to print more than one. More than one letter. Good luck. Or you want to print conditions. Or if you want to print all of them, you just go to the federal trade journal. So maybe, maybe in line 13? 
you um, calculate how many spaces you have in front um, of the x. So in the beginning it's more because i goes from zero to, I uh, know, i is always the, uh, no, I have to check. Exactly, i is the value uh, of how many, um, Uh, characters we have, so how many lines more or less. So we have uh, that's high and row becomes higher every time we run through this loop. So this means that we're doing this several times and the first time it will be, for example, three, no, two minus zero, I suppose. And that makes it two spaces here. So this calculation. So, so for the first time, it means uh, i is zero and rho uh, is uh, i is two and rho is zero. So that makes sp two, and then try um, in line fifteen, you have the space sign and multiply it with the value of space, sp. And since it's two, it, it outputs two spaces here. And then there will be the x. And then whenever we go through this loop, sp will become smaller because rho is increasing. And this means that we have only one and then zero spaces. And what we need on the other side is something that's, so for the first line, we don't, need anything, but then for the second it needs to get one, and then it needs to be, uh, yeah, oh. uh, so that's more or less like the calculation here, but in a way that's growing instead of, yeah. does this help you or? No, not really. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, maybe we would just switch again sure. and then if it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you become the next driver. And would you like to become, you, you explained it so well, so it, it's exactly the same task that you have as a navigator, just explaining or helping. They're really delicious. There will be no harm done. Thank you very much. So what would you like to do next, Jens? Um, well, I'd like to print the other side. Oh, just, can I just change the web page again? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll have that for the right one. Okay. Right. Well, one difference I noticed is that there's two spaces here and one space, but we actually have one extra space somehow. I'm not sure why, but we actually have three spaces if you look. Uh, well, maybe it doesn't matter too much, I guess. I guess the problem is probably, I guess this Spacing is not that important, I guess, as long as it looks like a diamond. Oh. So the driver navigator now are trying to figure out how many spaces we need uh, inside the diamond.
um, yeah, it was, I think, in Python 2 you could do it, but now it's, I think, a keyword argument. So you say a comma end equals an empty string, and then there won't be a new line at the end. Yes. I guess we will figure that out when we got the other things working. So on the right hand side we now see the interactive Python console which allows us to uh, just um, test individual statements from the Python script. So do we have a question? Yeah, does anyone know how to concatenate strings in Python? Embarrassing question. With the plus sign? No, we need to case it right. There needs to be some condition. There needs to be some condition to only print one X if we're at the top or bottom of the diamond, I guess. Or some other clever code to do it. Oh, maybe we should make a. F I think we should make a print some function to print a row or something. So what's your question right now? Um, no, I'm trying to work out how many spaces there should be in the middle. Uh, how do we get that? So we start off with two spaces and then space x space x and then no space and three spaces. Um, if we had one more row, it would be, okay, let's try it. Uh, you can just try out something and then see how it works, and you can always make it better. Or is there some comment from the audience? Did you hear Steve? Ah, oh, it isn't. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, two times. Okay. Yeah. 
It looks pretty nice already. Yes, so I think you accomplished quite a lot already, so maybe it's a good time to switch again. Yeah. You, you have now the chance <laughs> to implement it. Yeah, but you, you can sit here and then It will, it will work out, no problem. Oh. Someone interested in becoming the navigator again? You maybe? Yeah. Us. So, can we help you? Uh, I want to store that if it's um, A, I want to ignore this print, else print this. So, how can I get that A from here? Yes, yeah, so I guess that's not the problem that we only have X's here for now and not um, the actual character. So we need the opposite of the ORD function to get the character, for example. The, so, for example, the ORD function, it turns the character into the number. Now we need the opposite from turning the number into the character, for example, or because you wanted to get the A, if I understood you correctly. Yeah. Yeah, so... Steve, do you know the? Yeah, it's C H R. Yeah, but maybe do you maybe want to try to check for wall equals zero, and then you will see what how it works. Last row will be affected, right? Yeah, but we can also fix the last row later, so. I think it's CHR? Yes. Okay. Anytime you go and start in India, you have to put that colon at the end to tell Python what's up. Yeah, so the remark was that before an indent, we need a colon at the end in the line.
So the if statement can be used to. Uh, I think you need a double if. Yeah. To only do something uh, depending on the condition that's written down. For example, on line 17, we check whether the variable rho is unequal to zero, and only then we'll do the print statement below. It's, this is control. No problem. Yes, you can save it. Nice. Take your candy. <laughs> so anyone up for the next navigator position? So I would say, since we already have the shape of the diamond, more or less, maybe so at least the upper shape, maybe it would be a good idea to start getting the characters right. So instead of using X, use the actual character. We can store the character in a variable. This is shift? Uh, this is shift. Oh, okay. Oops. Uh, so it's shift eight is that. Eight is. I, I think you want to use the row, not. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Thank you. Row's going to start with zero. Yeah, okay. And then inside the table. Yeah. The plus sign is there. Oh, yeah. okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, oops. So in line 15, we are now reversing um, the number code to the actual character. And um, we do this by uh, using the number of the character A, adding the, diff uh, the number of the row, and then we get the character value of the character that we want to get. And looks like I've got an off by one error there. I didn't need to add one to the range. Because we said C and we run all the way down to D. Ah, I see. Ah, no, oh, it's you, D. Oh, they changed it. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it also works with C and D. Okay. 
So what's your next plan, Katie? I'm checking, I guess the A would be the same for, because it's it will be flipped. Um, we want to check if it's the, if it's A in line um, 16. So if it's either the last or the first row that we're printing out, it should, okay, that did not work. Um, I don't know if we're going to want to just make a, a, a second for loop yeah. for coming the other way out of the diamond or try to concatenate a couple of lists in the range. Usually what works best is what's the simplest and then you can optimize later. So would be my hint. This is control. Can we make range count backwards? Yes. Or I think if it, because range uh, accepts several arguments, so it's, if it's only one, it counts from zero to that number. If it has two, you can give the start value and the first value uh, that's not included. And if you have three arguments, the third argument says uh, what's the step, and then you can use, for example, minus one. I think zero would be correct there, because you want to go. It's, it doesn't include the engine, right? Yes. So we probably want to go minus one. We ah, yes. It's um, minus is here. So you also learn all the German layout. <laughs> yeah. I think the problem is you also need to uh, at this step, I think, so at the, currently it's from I plus one to, no, yeah, yeah, you can try it, try it with zero. If, if, if you move it to the right, uh, to the left, uh, more to the left, then it will automatically we just try you can move it like this so it's at least a little bit into the in the right shape So has anyone an idea what might be wrong here? I think we've got two off by ones. We, we, don't, need to, we don't need to start at I plus one because the, the middle row is special. So yeah, and then it does not include row zero. It, uh, so I think you have to say, I think you have to give it a minus one. No, uh, no I'm sorry, you, uh, take that one off. Instead of the zero, you have to say stop before minus one. Because <laughs> it doesn't include whatever value you put there. You know, we're almost done. Character before A is an act. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Awesome. I guess we may, may we need to pi minus one is the first argument. Bas this is kind of a season to taste thing. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is squared as long as you get to the. We've got a diamond. <laughs> yeah, uh, <this> everyone <laughs> <laughs> likes this diamond. Maybe we should also try it with other characters than D, just to be sure. Yeah, I think it looks pretty nice. Yeah, thank you, Katie. You finished the first uh, kata. So we can now start maybe uh, reflect on what we did and what we learned today, if you like. Do you want to say something? Just, just that I learned that that German keyboard is tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of uh, other uh, people that I know that are programming, they don't use the German layout because all the special characters are in an odd space, that's true. And you, how did you like it? Everyone, yeah, just. Yeah, I see, yeah, but also somehow the idea to keep it simple, to just focus on the code, because then it will also be that, um, for some people who already know the one IDE have an advantage over the others, and it's then, well, people would start to argue which IDE to use, so it's just a simple text editor to keep it simple. Yeah, Did everyone like it, or do you have any comments on how to improve or do it differently? Yeah, yeah so uh, I think from the session, we also have uh, about 30 more minutes, so we can still do more things if you like. Just, as you, as you now notice, it's all about us doing something together, so we can do Ever we want, and now everyone was brave enough to get on the stage. <laughs> I think it makes it easier to do more things. So, w what would be your preference? Shall we also do like the other Carta, for example, the Fisbus Carta, or d would you like to improve the script, or are you content and? Just want to take uh, do something else. Okay, so the idea was if you can just do one range instead of two, I guess it, it, yeah, I think it's not a list, it's an iterator. So it's like a list, but it's technically it's, it's a little bit different because it's like something that returns one value after the other. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so, does someone want to start uh, combining the two loops? Yeah, cool. so one idea would to would be to create a function that's inside the loops instead of having the same function. So would you like to do it? You also need a navigator, of course. I have enough. Yeah, maybe you could also copy this uh, file and then uh, we have both versions in, in case we break something. You could probably just uh, save it as a different a different name, or is it? Or yes, cutter two maybe, and then. Can you still read it? Okay. So to define a function, which is like code that you can reuse again, we use the dev statement in line 10, and then afterwards there's the name of the new function. And then I think it's just routing the function, so probably it can be lost. So what's your plan here? Um, I'm making a function basically which will do what's inside the loops, basically. Um, so I'm just going to try and create a code here. Uh, come on. And then just call this function. In, you have to change uh, the file name now. Okay, so what we did here is just yeah, reducing the amount of code that's in the script, which is always good because then it's less maintenance the script and it's easy to understand what's happening here because you now see that what's happening in line 20 and 23 is exactly the same. And before that, you had to manually check with, with your eyes whether or not it was the same. 
Is it possible to have a single loop? <laughs> Do you think it's better to have a single loop? No, I'm not sure. I guess well, you could either so introduce another variable and compute the row in a funny way, or I think we could probably concatenate. Can you still concatenate iterating? If There's one way to find will out. It, will, it, will it roll them out to the list, probably? There's only one way to find out, I would say. Comment that out in case we have to come back. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Does if we call to list function, does that create a list with those two? Like if we did list range blah 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 comma range. No, no, I think no, I think I, I think you I think your comment was right. Well, that's going to be my first guess. Is there any other way to combine ranges or um, I don't know? It just seems to work that. I think it'll work. Is it clear what's happening here, what we checked? So the idea is to combine both ranges from that we had in line 19 and 22. The problem is that the construct with range cannot be directly added, but instead you can create a list out of these ranges and then combine these lists so you have only one range. Now one of the things I wanted to sit in on the dojo for is that I can make Python do things, but I don't know if I'm doing it the Python way or just some horrible thing that I thought up. Would this be a natural thing to do in this kind of case? or? <laughs> yeah, so my opinion, so the question was whether or not this is the Pythonic way to do things. Um, I have to, s I think the problem here is that usually um, you use range and iterators or ranges because then you don't have uh, that much of a memory impact because you only, for, because the list needs um, memory space for each element and the range only creates the elements on demand. But I guess in this way it would be okay because we know it would be at most um, 52 elements. So usually it's, I think you write, uh, so one important thing is when you write code or Python code is that you write it not for the machine but also for the human who has to read it again and understand it. So that's often should be more important than optimizing each um, bit out of the code length, for example. Yeah, I think we can also wrap up unless there are, there's more interest in, in doing something. So thank you very much for coming and also thank you very much for being brave enough to get on the stage. And I hope you liked the concept of it and maybe you can also do it uh, 
you find other people after flock to do it with them together. I think it's a really nice format to get people from all kinds of uh, skill levels together. And I also hope you learned something even, uh, without any coding experience. And um, yeah, also have on the, so if you look for uh, coding dojo, you also find other resources on the internet. My presentation contains some links. So, yes, yeah, cyberdojo.org and codingdojo.org are two places uh, where you can find a lot of details about um, coding dojos. And also at Code Carter, you find other um, yeah, simple testing tasks, assignments, like the ones that we uh, did in this, or the one that we did. And also you find my contact information in case you want to contact me about this anytime later. So thank you very much and enjoy the talk.